While we were getting ready for our Black Friday sales and our courses now going on, the National Weather Service has given its website a makeover. Let's have a look at the new aviationweather.gov. Without getting into all the features of this site, let's go through how to navigate the new look. We'll start by using the top bar to navigate, going into weather, and then the first forecast option, ceiling and visibility. This will show areas of IFR and marginal conditions. Let's zoom in on the Central Plains area to look at how it's representing conditions. On the top right is the layers option. Some people call this the hamburger icon. We could switch what's graphically layered onto this map. The weather symbols are toggled on. These are the symbols for precipitation and thunder. We could click individual symbols to have them interpreted as light rain, rain, rain showers, and thunderstorms. All of these areas have that in their tab for a selected period shown on the slider at the bottom of the screen. We could toggle sigmets, one of which is at the very bottom of the screen. This one is a convective sigmet, and you could see the forecast symbols are showing thunderstorms in the western half of the area. We could toggle the big graphical air met. This one is for IFR conditions. We also can toggle what's in the drop down at the top of the layers. It starts with flight categories. The colors are showing areas of marginal VFR, IFR, and low IFR. Areas in white are forecast to have VFR conditions. We could swap this out for ceilings or visibilities. We could use the legend at the bottom right to see what the color codes correspond to here. Density altitude deviation is cool. It shows how far off standard the density altitude is for a given area, again, based off the of color coding. Let's go back into weather on the menu and look at the winds forecast. These are the wind barbs you remember, but they have a bit of a twist off the traditional ones. Firstly, they show wind direction in the same manner. Over East Texas, the surface winds are all showing southerly or southwesterly, bringing moisture in from the Gulf of Mexico, which will flow underneath the cool air to the north, creating classic, unstable conditions, explaining in part the convective activity in the Great Plains. The way wind velocities are shown is a bit different, and you may prefer it. Clicking on one, we see this is for 12 knots gusting 24 knots. We still have the traditional barbs. One barb here showing 10 knots, and then a half barb would show an extra 5. But instead of the gust factor shown with red barbs, it's now just written in, though it's a bit tricky to see. We can go through and see turbulence forecasts, as well as associated air mets and sigmets, and we can see icing. Again, the legend can help interpret. Of course, traditional METARs are still here. We have radar overlaid on top to see precip, and we can toggle other layers too. Here's the cloud coverage from the satellite. If we zoom in on Des Moines, we see the traditional graphical METAR information with flight category, winds, temp and dew point, ceiling, and altimeter. Clicking on the terminal gives us the raw data METAR. We can overlay fronts to see how systems may be moving across the country. Let's look at the prog charts. We can advance the forecast period to see the movement of fronts and precipitation as time progresses. If you don't already know about forecast discussions, they're a great resource often overlooked, where the weather specialist for a given area gives a plain English description of the forecast and the factors that went into the TAF. A cool new feature is the integrated terminal weather system winds. This shows a chart of sustained winds and gusts over a selected period, showing peaks and troughs of wind strength. One more thing we can do is submit PIREPS via this site. You need to have a registered account and be verified with the National Weather Service, which it seems requires only your pilot certificate and name be submitted and then vetted. I got mine verified in less than 24 hours. We can enter in our required location information into these four fields, then we can enter in whatever conditions we want to report on. We'll put in a report on some light turbulence showing the intensity, type, and frequency as well as the sky conditions. If we want to report low-level wind shear, we'll get prompted for a speed and altitude gain or loss amount as it applies. From there, we'd hit encode to submit it. So that's a quick rundown on what's new on aviationweather.gov. Check out Flight Insight courses and more at the link here or in the description today.